This section is on least squares regression. The objectives here are to find the least squares regression line and use a line to make predictions, and then also interpret the slope and the y-intercept of the least squares regression line. Okay, so let's start off with a example, okay, with the sample data here. Okay, we have both x and y values, and these would be considered ordered pairs, each one of these. So if you were to create a scatter plot of these points, then a least squares regression line is the line that best fits into that scatter plot. What we have here is just a sample, but if we had access to all the population data, then the actual line would be this. Now, this is the equation of a line, and we have our y and our x variables, as you can see, but we also have these two other quantities. Okay, We have it looks like a B, but that's actually a Greek letter. That's a beta. Okay, that's beta. And there's a reason we're using Greek letters here. Now this is the slope, and this is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. Okay, now why are we using Greek letters? Because typically we use Greek letters for population parameters, right? And these are pretty much theoretical values that we can't really calculate unless we have all the population data. So the best we can do is actually estimate these values, okay, using sample data, okay. So this is essentially like the the actual line that we typically can't calculate unless we have the population data. Since we do have sample data, then we can actually estimate this actual line. Okay, now the equation for that will be y hat equals lowercase b1 x plus b sub 0. Now again these are again the slope and the y coordinate of the y-intercept just like in the actual line but these are estimates because these are calculated using sample data. Okay. So the actual line is y equals the estimate line is has that y hat right there. Okay, we are trying to target the true actual line by using this estimate because we only have access to sample data. Now later on we're going to talk about whether our estimate of this line is actually good, whether it is actually useful because once we come up with a best fit line then we can use that to predict y values given an x value. If we have this x list and y list, if I put that in L1 and L2 in our TI calculator, then let me just draw this down here. We can go into stat calc linreg ax plus b, which we talked about in the previous section. And your a would essentially be your slope, and your b would be your y-intercept. Okay. If you were to run that through the calculator, in fact, let's go ahead and do that on the calculator now. Okay, here we are on the calculator. We have a blank home screen here. If I go into stat, I'm going to put this X list and this Y list into L1 and L2. Uh, edit. Let me go ahead and clear out these lists. Okay, let me just go ahead and type away. Okay, so now that you have your two lists in there, there's a couple things I do want to explore first, and that is if we quit out of this, we can actually do like a scatter plot. So you go second stat plot, and I just have one of these on, everything else is off. I'm going to do L1 versus L2, X, Y, that's the scatter plot. Yeah, everything's good. So just like I did this in the previous section, I went to the details. Um, let's go ahead and quit out of this. If I were to go to zoom and then go to the ninth option, which should be zoom stat. Yes, it is. Then you get something that looks like that. Okay, you see those dotted lines? That The one on the y axis is 0, 5.8. And as x increases, all these y values actually start to decrease. They start going downwards. Okay, there's a line that will best fit this data. Okay, it should go kind of in a downwards direction. Now let's go ahead and quit out of this. I still have my 
list in L1 and L2. Let's go to stat, go to calc, lin reddit AX plus B should be that fourth option. And just pay close attention to that A is the slope and the B is the Y intercept in our calculator. And X list is L1, Y list is L2, everything else is blanked out. Let's go ahead and calculate. And you'll notice that it gives you kind of a, an equation at the top that says y equals ax plus b. That way you can tell which one's the slope and which one's the y-intercept. The slope here is negative 0.71, which was expected because that scatter plot was, was going downward from left to right. So it makes sense that the slope is negative. That's what a negative slope does. And then the y-intercept is 6.55. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Okay. And then just to look at this, the R value, the negative 0.94, that looks like a pretty strong correlation. Uh, it's a strong negative correlation, linear correlation. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, use those slopes and y-intercept in our equation here. So the equation that best fits our data, right, it's going to be y hat because this is using sample data. This is an estimate. The slope was what negative 0.71 if I round to two decimal places times x plus the y coordinate of the y intercept is 6.55. Okay, that is our best estimate of the line that would fit this data. We're going to go into a little bit more detail later on whether to see if this line best fits our data really well. Uh, one thing that we did notice in that output was that the R value was a strong correlation. So that's kind of indicating that this is probably a good equation to use to predict Y values given an X value. But there will be a more rigorous way in the next section. And it will have to do with there being a claim whether two variables are correlated and you know what we do with claims, we run that through some sort of hypothesis testing. So that'll be the last thing we talk about in the next section. All right, so continuing with this problem here, use this equation to predict the y if x equals three. Okay, now again, the y value is a theoretical value, right? That's from the actual equation. So in order to predict y, well, y hat predicts y, right? And what's the equation for y hat? Well. We just wrote it. It's negative 0.71x plus 6.55. That's our prediction model. And we're looking for this y when x is 3. So we just plug in 3 for x. And if you were to calculate that, you would get a positive 4.42. OK. Now, again, this is an x coordinate and a y coordinate. So this point would essentially be your x and y is 3 comma 4.42. Now, I did show you that scatter diagram in the calculator, but let's go ahead and graph it just manually here. Okay, so the scope of our data, if you look uh, above here, the x values range from 0 to 6, and the y values go as low as 1.9 and as high as 5.8. So either way, I'm going to make the scale going from 0 to 6, maybe even further than that, just to kind of encompass everything. Now what I want to do is plot each one of those points that we observed, right, from our sample. Uh, we have 0, 5.8, that should be somewhere around, I would say somewhere around here. And then we also have 2, 5.7, just trying to eyeball it the best I can. Uh, we have a 3, 5.2, probably like right there. Uh, we have 5, 2.8. We have 6, 1.9. So it's right below the 2. And we have another 6, but that one has a y value of 2.2. .2. So somewhere around, like, around there. Okay, so those are the values up here that I'm referring to. Okay, so now our equation, the best fit line, is the following. Okay, so anytime you're plotting a line, you need two points. Okay, uh, well, one point that we have is the one that we just calculated in part B. So that's 3 and 4.42. 4 
And another automatic point that you get is the y-intercept. And that occurs at 0, 6.55. So let me go ahead and draw that in. So the y-intercept, intercept, is the point 0, 6.55. That's your x and y. So those two points will lie on this line. Okay, so let me draw those in. So 0, 6.55 seems to be around here. And we have the point 3, comma, 4.42. So let me see if I can find that. Here's 3, 4.42. I would say it's like right there. All right, now I'm going to draw a line right through these two points. This again is 0 comma 6.55. This is 3 comma 4.42. Okay, I'm going to use a ruler here to get it nice and straight as much as possible. Um, let's say that seems pretty good. Okay, so that's the line that best fits this data. Okay, now how is that actually done in the calculator? We'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit on the next page. Um, the derivation we won't get into. It does require in some proofs calculus to come up with this derivation. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have every point on this line will actually be predicted by this, this equation, right? the prediction equation. And then we have observed values which are in blue that you see are not precisely on this line. So you see how there can be some sort of, um, there's a difference between what our model says and what we actually see in real life. Okay, And these differences are actually called residuals. Okay, So residuals are differences between the observed values and the predicted values. Okay. The formula to compute the residual is what we observe minus the predicted. Okay, So that's just your y value from your data and your y hat coming from the best fit line, the prediction model. Okay, So if you actually have a data value, you can calculate the residual in this format. So, uh, so using the line from the last example and the predicted value of x equals 3, which we found to be 3 and 4.42 when we actually ran this through our model here. Uh, there is a value in the table for 3 already, and that was that it was 5.2. Let me go back up there just so you can see that. So there was 3, 5.2. Okay, so that was what uh, was observed. Okay. For this x equals 3, the observed value was of y was 5.2, but the predictive value was 4.42, and the residual is 0.78. Now, in order to create a line that best fits our data, the derivation of that requires us to minimize the residuals as best as we can. So if you have, let's just, let me just create a, a quick scatter plot here. Uh, you can see that if I put a line that goes, let's say something like this, right? The residuals, right? The distance between any one of these values to the line would be the residuals, right? Here would be the residual, that would be the residual, and so forth, right? Now, what we do is we move this line in such a way that it minimizes the length of those residuals. Okay, so let me if I were to erase that again and then draw another line through there. And you can kind of imagine that the best fit line to this data scatter plot would probably be going through like this. So you'll see that the distance between each observed value and the predicted value, you're looking for a sum total that will make all the observed values and the predicted values, the sum of those to be as minimized as possible. Okay, because if you tilt it too far off, like like something like 
I'm going to do something more extreme, make it a positive slope. You see how all these values would be much further away from that line, especially like all these values. And it wouldn't minimize that residual distance. So that's the idea behind the effort to actually come up with this best fit line. Okay, so this best fit line is also known as a least squares regression line. So you can kind of interchange those words. Best fit line, least squares regression line, and this least squares regression line, or you can call it just regression line or best fit line, we use this to make predictions. Okay, so just like before, I mentioned that before. And the way to actually calculate the slope and the y-intercept is in the following ways. Okay, uh, The slope can be calculated using the standard deviation of all the y-values divided by the standard deviation of all the x-values. And if you calculate that correlation between x and y, that's your r. And if you just multiply all those out and divide, that'll give you the slope. And one of the nice things about the best fit line is that if you were to calculate the mean of all your x values and the mean of all your y values, that point is guaranteed to be on your line, which is nice. Okay, okay so that's a nice, neat um, fact. That way you know that your line's not completely off because it does have to cross through the average of all your data. So for example, again, let me just kind of do a quick sketch of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so of all the Y values, right, there's a range of Y values. I would say like Y bar would probably be like around there. And of all the X values, here's the range of all the X values, right? I would say that maybe X bar would be right here. That point will actually lie on the line, okay? And then the slope, again, is determined by how spread out the data is, but it'll probably be something like that. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm getting at with X bar and Y bar are always going to be on that regression line, no matter what. Okay, now there is a caution when using this best fit line. And that caution is the following. Is that we should not use the least squares regression line to make predictions based on values of the explanatory variable that are much larger or much smaller than the observed values. Okay. As we are not sure the linear relation continues forever. Uh, the explanatory variable, which is the x value, that are much larger or small than the observed values are considered outside the scope of the model. Okay. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Meaning that this line that we have in this example that I just drew up up here, it shouldn't be used to make any predictions beyond the scope of your data. Because if your, your scope of your data is only from here to here, you shouldn't use this line to predict values of x way out here because you don't actually have any data out here. You don't know if this, this linear relationship continues. It might actually curve down over here we just don't know how it behaves okay we can only use this model to do what's called interpolation okay and that is to predict values in, within the range of our data so you really want to keep inside the scope of our observed values to make predictions okay that's really where this model is best used at okay if you go anywhere beyond the scope of our data, then we are doing what's called extrapolation. Okay, and that's not very reliable. Okay, so we have our least squares regression line. That's this guy here. And there is an interpretation of the slope and the y-intercept. And the are the following. Uh, for an additional increase in the unit in the explanatory variable, in your x variable, the response variable, which is your y variable, will increase or decrease by b1 units. Okay, so what is that saying? Well, they're saying that the slope, which is equal to B1, can be written in the following way. Because any number can be written over one. So we say B1 over one. Okay, and if you remember the definition of the slope from your algebra course, is that 
A slope is the rise over the run. Okay. Or the change in the y value, right? The rise means the vertical variable divided by the change in the x value. That's what run represents the change in the horizontal variable. So if I just draw uh, an x, y, and for example, if you have between any two numbers that are one unit apart, so let's just go ahead and write in uh, one, two, three, and let me just draw a best fit line through here, just some random line. So let's say that's our the equation of our line. That's this guy. Then let's go from point two to point three. Okay. To get there, you have to run, right? That's your run. That's only one unit. And you have to rise. Well, what do you rise? Well, you rise B1. That's your rise. Okay, so that's what a slope is, rise over run. So the interpretation there is for every one unit increase in your X value, your Y value changes by B1 units. Okay, for whatever the slope is. Okay, we'll do an example to illustrate that in, in further detail. And what's the interpretation of the y-intercept? Well, we can interpret the y-intercept as being the value of the response variable, which is our y variable, when the value of the explanatory variable, x variable, is zero. Okay, so that's pretty easy to deal with. Now, sometimes the y-intercept will not make sense and will not be interpretable because it's outside the scope of your data but we still need this in the model. Okay, so for example, if you're talking about, I don't know, you have a bunch of data out here and your best fit model goes something like this, right? Now it will create a y-intercept, right? But the interpretation of that y-intercept might not make any sense because it's outside of the scope of our data because our scope of our data is out here. Okay, so but you still need it in the model. All right, let's do a couple examples now. Example one, using the data from the previous section, example one, uh, we had that height versus shoe size example. Okay, and this is what the graph looked like. You had your height in inches along the x-axis, and you also had your shoe size along the vertical axis here. Okay, that was your y and this is your x. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the results from the previous section. If you recall, we found out that the slope was let's be one, which is 0.226. If you actually ran that data through your calculator, and the y-intercept would have been b sub zero. Now, I don't think we actually wrote this down last time, but in the output of the calculator, you'll recall that we did get these values, the slope and the y-intercept. So that's where I'm getting this from. So our least squares regression line is the following. Y hat is equal to our slope, 0.226 x plus our y-intercept which in our case it's a negative value, so it's negative 4.926. Okay. You can also rearrange the order here. You can write it as negative 4.926 plus 0.226x. I know on online homework they sometimes write it in that order. So don't get that mixed up. Just remember that the number next to your x variable is always a slope. So what's the interpretation of the slope here? Okay, so slope. Well, that is above. It was given as 0.226. Okay. And we say that, well, that's the same as saying 0.226 over 1. Okay, that's the same number. And this is essentially like our rise over our run. Right, this is our rise over our run. So this is units of y, and this is in units of x. So what do I mean by units? 
uh, in just the way it's actually measured. So for example, the X units are in inches, right? And the Y units are in, uh, well, I think it's just shoe size. Yeah, shoe size. Okay, so the interpretation here is the following. On average, because these are average values, for every increase in the X variable, which means every one inch increase in height, there is a 0.226 increase because it's a positive value in shoe size. That's what the interpretation here. Obviously not everybody follows this uh, best fit line because the scatter plot does show essentially like two people having the same height but with different shoe sizes. But on average, this is the, the trend. Okay, so if, if your height is increased by one inch, then your shoe size will be increased by 0.226. Now I know that shoe sizes are, are increments of one. Sometimes there are in halves also. So you can have like an 8.5 or a 9 or 9.5 or whatever and you do actually see that in the data too you can have I see that that's like a someone who was 69 inches tall was a 10 and a half okay but this is what it comes out to be all right so now we're going to predict okay so this means use the regression equation anytime they tell you to predict something we're using the regression equation which we found up here so we're going to predict the shoe size, right? That's our Y value for someone who is 57 and 70 inches tall. So we're going to do it twice. Okay, and there's a reason I'm doing that. And uh, again, in order to be able to fit this line, which I'm going to do up here with the straight line, you need just two points. So that's where I'm getting this 57 and 74. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's do that for 57 first. Y hat. So when x is equal to 57, y hat equals, let me use the equation, 0.226 times 57 minus 4.926. Let me just show you where I'm getting this from. This is coming from over here. And if I were to calculate that, I get the following shoe size, 7.956. So someone who's 57 inches has a shoe size of 7.956, okay? That's a, approximately like a size eight shoe, right? Okay, but we're gonna keep it in the decimals. And then for someone who is 70 inches tall, the predicted shoe size for that person, well, we're gonna use the prediction model, right? Our regression line. Instead of 57, now we have 70 inches. And let's go ahead and run that through our calculator. And I get a shoe size of 10.894. Again, these are all points. These are really points on the line. This is the point 57 comma 7.956, right? That's one point. And this is another point. This is the point 70 comma 10.894. Okay, find the residual for an individual who is 70 inches tall. So we're going to use the residual. Remember uh, from our definition, a residual is calculated using your observed minus your predicted. So that means there has to have been some sort of observed value for 70. Okay, so for somebody who was 70 inches tall. We know what the predicted value is. We just calculated it right here. That's 10.894. Now let's go up to our scatter plot to see if there was somebody who was 70 inches tall. Okay. Uh, looks like 70 inches is right here. And I believe there is, yeah, there is a data value up there for somebody who is 70. So that is 70 comma 12. That's your X and Y value. So that's an observed value. So somebody who was 70 inches tall, it was observed to be 12, but on average, we predict that somebody who is 70 inches tall should be a 10.89 uh, based on this, on all the data that we have from this sample. Okay, so the residual here is that it is, it's off by 1.106 shoe sizes. Again, these are all measured in shoe size, 12 shoe size and a 10.894 shoe size. So the residual should also be 
measured in shoe size. There is units associated with this. So we're going to draw that line on the plot. Uh, we're going to need at least two points. So let's use the results from part C, right? these two points here. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to draw those up over here. We have 57, 7.956. Uh, that's really close to eight. So 57 and eight, almost like, I'm going to say that right there. I'm going to draw a line to it. That's the point 57 comma 7.956. And then also for 70, 70.894, that's really close to 11. So for 70, we have let's say I'm just gonna try to eyeball it the best I can right there that's the point 70 comma 10.894 all right now we have these two values let's go ahead and draw a best fit line between those Uh, I think that's the best I can do there. Draw with the blue line. Okay. So, of course, we have the equation of this line is y hat equals 0.226x minus 4.926. Any point that lies on that line is a predicted value. And of course, the scatter diagram, all those other points that you see scattered around, those are real observed values from our sample. Okay, And this line best fits the data. Let's do one more example. Okay, So the data shown to the right are based on a study for drilling rock. The researchers wanted to determine whether the time it takes to dry drill a distance of five feet in rock increases with the depth at which the drilling begins. So, depth at which the drilling begins is explanatory variable. Right, that's your x variable. That's what they're telling us. And the time it takes to drill five feet is a response variable. So, let's just trying to understand what's going on. They're saying on various depths, right? If you're already um, deep within the surface, they're measuring how much time it takes to drill an additional five feet. Okay, Just by looking at the numbers here, if you're only 35 feet below the surface, it takes 5.88 minutes, right? But the deeper you get into the earth, it takes longer. You can see how the numbers are increasing. Okay, so that's probably has to do with um, the dirt is just more loose at the surface than it is deeper down because of all the weight above it so it's just more compact so it takes longer to dig through it that's that's probably the idea behind this okay and we want to be able to predict how much time it will take the deeper we get in okay so use your calculator to sketch a scatter plot and the least squares regression line okay so this is what we're going to do we're going to put in your data into l1 and then l2 for your y value on the calculator and we'll come back and try to draw that and then of course we we're going to do a linreg ax plus b to come up with the regression line the slope and the winder so all right let's go to the calculator okay here we are at the blake home screen from here we're going to go to stat edit let me go ahead and clear out these two lists and let's go ahead and start typing away Okay, uh, now that I'm done entering all that data and I double checked everything, let's go over to the scatter plot. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. Um, everything should be set up if you didn't do anything between the previous example and this example, but let's go to the scatter plot. Uh, only the first plot is turned on, everything else is turned off. It is under scatter plot, the under type scatter plot. 
L1 is your X, L2 is your Y. So let's go ahead and quit out of this. We have to press zoom. And if we go down to the ninth option here, zoom stat, and that's our scatter plot. Okay, so as we're seeing here, we go deeper into the earth, right? That's your X axis. The time, the Y value, the time it takes to drill an additional five feet starts to actually increase, okay? Now the band here isn't super tight, okay? There, there seems to be a lot of variation for different depths, but for the most part, I do see a positive correlation. It's not really a super strong linear correlation, but for the most part, it does look like it's positive. So let's go ahead and try to reproduce that graph manually. Okay, so for the most part, that looks pretty similar to what we have had on our scatter plot, right? It's not a very, very tight band here, but we can, for the most part, see some sort of upwards positive linear correlation. On the calculator, if you go to stat, calc, lin reg, ax plus b, if you run that through your calculator, let's actually do that exercise once more. Let's go back to the calculator. Again, here's our scatter plot. For the most part, it looks pretty pretty accurate of course I'm doing this by hand so it's not perfect okay so we do have the data in our calculator so, so let's go ahead and quit out of this I can quit and I'm going to go to stat calc lin reg ax plus b x list is an l1 y list is l2 yes go ahead and calculate and again our a is a slope you can tell by the equation at the top and a y-intercept is the b. Do we have okay, so again, that's our slope here. And that's our y-coordinate of our y-intercept. Okay, and we're going to use this formula for any type of prediction. Okay, so predict the drilling time if drilling starts at 130 feet. Well, where we have a value for 130 feet, an observed value, and that's at 6.93. Uh, but again, in this case, they actually want us to come up with a predicted value, and we have to use our prediction equation. Okay, And of course, it, what we observe and what is predicted isn't going to be exactly the same. So we're going to use y hat equals 0 0.01 times 130 is our x plus 5.53. We're going to calculate that, and we're going to get 6.83. And why, again, the units for that is measured in minutes. That's how long it takes to drill those additional five feet. The interpretation here is at a depth of 130, in order to drill an additional five feet, it's going to take 6.83 minutes. Uh, is the observed drilling time at 130 feet above below average. It can either be above or below. So what is it that we have observed? So at 130, 6.93 is observed. 6.93 minutes are observed. 6.93 is above average. Right? Because the average value was, this is the average value. Right? Because the model is predicting the average value or the predicted value. Okay. Now find the residual for 130. Of course, residual is just calculated as observed y value minus predicted. And in our case, the observed is 6.93 minutes minus predicted, which is 6.83 minutes. And that is a difference of 0 0.10 minutes. Okay, that's it for this section. We have one more section left. Thanks for watching.